Good afternoon, everyone. This is the monthly meeting of the Dayton Stormwater Committee. It's Wednesday, May 15th, 2024. And the time is 1.02 p.m. We're in the upper, upper level meeting room at the Old Town Hall. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is a public meeting being video and audio recorded for posting on YouTube. And if we have, this is both a, a live meeting and a Zoom meeting. And the phone number for Zoom is 1-929-205-6099. We stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United States, States of America, to the republic for which, for which it stands, one nation, under God, God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Attendance, Mr. Phillips. David Phillips, aye, here. Mr. Tom Ferry, here. Mr. Woods. Here. Nancy Goulart is here. Um, Mrs. Caledonia, I don't expect her. And Mr. Agia said he would be late. Uh, Weston and Sampson. Uh, here, James Reardon. Okay. Um, we have agenda items 4A and 4B. These are Weston and Sampson engineering project updates. So, uh, Mr. Redden, do you have anything uh, anything new on Brook Street Solar? Uh, nothing new on Brook Street Solar. Um, we're, uh, you know, have done the uh, initial review, and I understand that there will be a new proposal on that one uh, to um, to yeah. uh, address the the changes in the stormwater system. Okay. Um, and I did have communication back and forth with Nick Fassendor. I think I copied you and, and Jake Pearson on it as far as information he needed. So yeah. the status of Brook Street, Brook Street Solar is that the planning board is having a hearing on June the 5th at 7 p.m. And so we've posted a meeting of the Stormwater Committee uh, so that we can all hear the same presentation. Um, I saw Mr. Digits, the chairman of the CONCOM, and suggested to him that they also attend that meeting uh, because we don't really know if there will be anything for the CONCOM to weigh in on, but um, with, with the Stormwater Committee and the Conservation Commission there, any action that is taken uh, will be able to respond. Um, I think the only thing Stormwater will be looking at is a request for a waiver to go from an infiltration basin to whatever they're gonna call this new system. So um, that's where we are on that. Does anybody have any questions on Brook Street Solar? Comments or anything? Okay. Um, okay, <clears throat> agenda item 4B, uh, Weston and Sampson, MACS, this is Arujos. Anything on, on this one, uh, Mr. Reardon? Uh, nothing new at this point. I believe we are um, uh, just waiting for the uh, the new as builds. In that correct? Um, did you get the, the calculations you were looking for? Yeah, on that one. Because so think, the, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, the question was whether or not. Um, the engineers for MACS were told that. And we, we don't have the minutes here, but we're thinking it was the March meeting when the request was made. And I'll look that up when I get home. But um, I remember this, it, it, the request was made. And I just want to make sure that somebody was present here from that solar farm. Yeah, as of, uh, as, I, as of the last thing I've heard about that, we are still waiting for those, uh, those calculations. Okay. Does anybody have any questions on uh, MACS um, Arujo Solar Farm? None here. You all set, John? Not at this time. Okay, you all set, Woody? Yes, ma'am, I'm all set. Okay. 
Uh, next agenda item, active project update, Blue Wave Solar, Tremont and Middle Streets. Uh, just before I left the house, there was an email that came in with some, I think it was drone pictures. Uh, was that? I didn't get that one. Um, I'm not sure who was on that. Sorry, I just sent that in a panic, but okay. um, I could I could share my screen and uh, kind of show this show everyone that if you guys have a good visual here. Okay. So, do you have any anything uh, any update or anything on on the project on Tremont and Middle Street? Oh, no, we've got we've got pretty good grass growth out there. Um, I sent a check in last week for the final review with Weston and Sampson. And um, I, I think we're in pretty good shape to wrap this one up. So you've got good ground cover? Yeah, let me um, let me see if I can share my screen here. Just so uh, these uh, photos are from Monday. Yeah, that's still uh, we we did our final round of seeding about a week and a half ago. So there are some areas we're expecting to kind of come up in the next week or two here, but overall we're in a uh, pretty good shape. Let's see. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to share my screen actually. Oh, wait, there we go. Oh yes, I can't share my screen. You've been successful with this yet, but I, I allowed it to share. I don't. I don't think it's going to come up. All right. Yeah. So I guess um I did I did send over those pictures. Um, let me see who that actually went to. So yeah, it looks like Nancy, um, Jim McGuire, Tom Ferry, and Heather were was on were on that email. Yeah. Oh yeah, yep, I have that. So yep. you've got so yeah, there's a bunch of pictures. Uh, which one in particular you want everyone to see? Oh, just saw uh, just any one. I think. Um, let's see. There's there should be one, a couple of them where you can kind of see through the solar and see the grass grows a little bit better than others. Yes. Um, let's see the one that ends with I think. DA0F60A1 is a pretty good representation. Here we go. Yeah, I, I clicked on another one too. Um, I think, yeah, that was showing it's it's coming in well. It is another good one. Yep, and obviously there's a few spots we're waiting to see come up even more. But again, it's uh, we've been pretty happy with the growth in the past, uh, you know, about month or so here. Yeah, so the southwest corner and the very northern end. Looks like it still needs to be coming where you know where a lot of traffic was. Yeah, yeah. This would be the tree, Tremont Street end. Oh yeah. And the southwestern corner is still kind of barren because there's been a lot of activity there, but I'm sure it's going to come in very quickly. Yeah, oh. yeah. Now, uh, not much activity going on. Oh. I'm just like, where's Middle Street? Middle Street would be right here. Like over here. That's yeah. what I thought. Further down here. Okay. This is that corner where there's like the old stone wall or whatever it is. Yes. In the grapevines. Yep. Okay. And uh, that takes care of the picture. The only question I had was, did you guys, were you, were you able to take care of that silt in the Abadas property? Yep, yep. Everything got uh, taken care of. The stuff by the culvert. And then there was a little bit of silt in the corner, kind of where the wood fence meets the metal fence there. And we got that all taken care of as well. Um, could you send those pictures to uh, Jim Reardon at Weston and Samson, please? Oh, yeah, absolutely. 
So he's a, a, a few boards on the fence. You saw, I don't know if you saw them, they came out. Yep. So we saw that in our, uh, our site super out there. Got that taken care of on Monday this week. Yeah. I, I realize that's not a stormwater issue, but that's an easy fix. Yep, exactly. So we're working with our fence company and going to see, um, you know, kind of monitoring <clears throat> and possibly get a little bit more, a, a better anchor going in there as well. Yeah. That's just from trees that grew with pressure. Either, yeah. turn the board, either just turn the board around or replace the board. Yep, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, we got, I think there was, uh, I think, 15 of them that I counted that we got replaced on uh, Monday this week. Yes. Very good. Uh, yep. And, uh, Jim, what's your email address so I can get you those pictures? Sure, Greg. Um, and if you'd like, I'll put it in the chat. But it's my yes. last name and first initial. Yeah. He's had it for and then it is at W-S-E-I-N-C dot com. Um, hey, um, one thing I know you mentioned uh, a little bit earlier that you had sent the check in to the town. Um, I was in contact with Mike Mullen yesterday. We were touching base about projects yep. and he mentioned to me that he hadn't received it yet. And while we were talking, I just checked with him to see if maybe uh, maybe I got my wires crossed. But he said he, he hasn't gotten that yet. So you may want to check in with him and just make sure you know make sure that there wasn't something lost in translation yep yeah i'll uh, touch with touch base with him i know it went out friday so it could still be he's coming up from uh, new jersey i think so it could still be in the transit and i'll see if i can get some tracking on that too okay sounds good there i uh put my email address in the did it actually go in the way it was supposed to uh reared in Good. All right. Awesome. I'll forward you these pictures right now. Great. Thank you, Greg. Oh, yeah. No problem. Chairman, uh, yes. just, Jesse's had his hand up. Blue Wave. Yeah. Thank you. Jesse Robertson Dubois, Blue Wave. I'm our uh, sustainable solar uh, development director. Um, but what that really means is I focus on our agrivoltaics. So I, I wanted to just check in today on the process on the stormwater permit. We're obviously very eager with the agricultural season in swing at this point to, to be able to start work on the agricultural aspects of the project. And, um, you know, just wanted to, to get a feel for what the timeline looks like to be able to close out the stormwater permit and to be able to begin agricultural activity, whether you um, anticipate, uh, if there's any anticipation, timeline that you do anticipate uh, or whether uh, if there are outstanding items that that wouldn't be related to the agricultural activity, we, we could get approval to go ahead and, and start doing the, the agricultural work um, while we're waiting for the, the final sign off. So it's sort of just a check in. OK, so I was going to ask that question. Uh, Jim <laughs> excuse me. Yes. Um, I know you're waiting for the money in order to finish the work that you have to do. Um, is there anything that would affect the agricultural part of this? Did you hear Jesse's question? I did. Um, it It's a little hard for me to say because I don't know what the agri agricultural part of this is and how it might relate to the stormwater part of it. Um, so it, I don't know if, if maybe maybe uh, Jesse could elucidate that. Yeah, so so near term, what we're most eager to to do is to be able to start um, uh, decompacting and picking rocks that we turn up, et cetera, in the array rows uh, that are planned for agricultural use. We have a, a three year plan of phasing in that agricultural use for cropping over several years. So the initial for this year that we're trying to focus on will be in that northwest quadrant of the array. Um, or nearly all of that section. There's a little bit on the far west edge that was previously forested. We're not going to take that on this year. We're trying to focus just on the uh, pre-existing agricultural cropland in that northwest quadrant. So we're looking to, to be able to chisel plow in there, pick any rocks that, that come up, and then get cover crops planted. The goal with that is to get several cycles of cover crops this year, really as preparation for, for um 
harvestable crops next year. We're not uh, trying this year to get like a full season of butternut squash, which was the original plan. We really want to focus on some um, cover cropping for soil restoration purposes. So we'll get it, get chisel plowed, rock picked, cover cropped, till that back in uh, in the summer, do another short summer season cover crop put that back in, do a fall season cover crop to carry it over the winter. And then next year we would start with full cropping activity. So it's this, um, you know, in, within the context of a, a stormwater permit and a, and a solar project, it's an unusual uh, game plan for it. And obviously we recognize that you're concerned to see vegetative stabilization and all the places that are intended for long-term vegetative stabilization. Um, but in those crop rows, it would be very, very helpful if we can get started on that agricultural work, get those cover crops in the ground to start fixing nitrogen uh, and helping decompact those soils. When you say cover crops, are you talking about digging up the grass that's growing there and putting something else down, like rye or something? Yeah, so in the near term for this summer, it will be oats and peas and several other things in there. But the idea is to both get biomass yeah. growing that we can then turn back into the soil to increase the carbon content, as well as uh, legumes, uh, peas and vetch that will fix nitrogen and improve the fertility of the soil. So yes, we're, we're talking about tilling up the crop rows in between the array rows, not, not directly underneath, not directly in the drip line, but in, <clears> those, <throat> um, in those interior parts of between the rows. And that's, that yeah. is, Ultimately, that's the plan for the array long term. It's intended as a crop production array. Is 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 the plan to have the the solar farm up and generating electricity before you start your agricultural work? Yeah, they're, they're already they've already moved on beyond that. They're well underway. Are they generated? Yes. Oh, yes. You know what was the date they went live? Uh, just fairly recently. Um, the um, all of the conditions were met for them to be able to do that. Because this is a tracking array system, so there's a lot of logistics to it. I mean, is it just flip the switch and everything's hunky-dory? So um, I don't know if they're fully um, at full capacity with efficiency yet, but they are working toward that. Yep, that's, cool. a, that's an accurate statement. Thank you. So positive thing. <laughs> yeah. Yes. You're right to ask Jim that consideration on the storm, stormwater component. However, we had this discussion about the compaction in the soil that does need to get freed up to help with the stormwater component. Mm -hmm. and, and the type of cover crops they're talking about will move advance the agriculture component. They, they really need to disturb that soil. Yeah, uh, Jesse, um, from a stormwater standpoint, agricultural operations are exempt under the stormwater bylaw and regs. Obviously, <clears throat> where ground cover is growing, which is part of the stormwater program uh, or maintenance, whatever you want to call it, um, it's important that that grows. But I would think based on what I have seen and what I've heard, uh, once the grass cover is substantial, uh, you should be able to start your agricultural operations. Uh, Jim Ridden, any comments? So, so I just want to confirm uh, that my understanding from what you just said, Nancy, is correct, that because this is an agricultural use, um, that it has been viewed that way, that this would be an exempt activity and not something that we'd need to worry about from a permitting standpoint? Correct. Okay. Yeah, if that's the case, then uh, uh, I wouldn't have any uh, any questions about it then. Uh, yeah, so I, I think the only thing we're waiting for from a stormwater perspective is the uh, final report or from Weston and Sampson uh, relative to, uh, I know you're gonna look at as built and things like that, but other than that, um, uh, as I said, I think the agricultural thing can, can start once the ground cover is sufficient to hold the soil uh, on the site, but then you can start your work. Okay, uh, just for, for, for clarification, you're referring to the, the ground cover being sufficient around the around the perimeter and the in the array rows. I mean, we will be yeah, well, disturbing 
that, the, that vegetation as part of the agricultural activity? So the, the, um, the drone shots that we got today, which is what Mr. Ferry was passing around, is showing that the ground cover is growing. You know, you can see the green grass. Yep. Um, and the site, the part of the site you're going to be working in appears to have the best grass growing from the pictures. So in, in that sense, the, the ground cover is there to stabilize the soil. And that, if that's the area you're going to be working in, you should be okay to now go ahead and start the agricultural part of it. Other parts that don't have ground cover like that section has, but you're not working in that area. So if you were going into an area that didn't have anything growing there, we probably ask you to hold off until there's something growing to stabilize it. But the area you're in looks good and green. Okay, that's great. That's helpful. I, I appreciate that clarification. Thank you. Okay, so uh, Greg, do you have anything else? I know that that's uh, really about it for my end. Just uh, we're keeping an eye on it and just uh, reseeding in a couple of weeks if we don't see any good growth around the edges coming in yet. Okay. I have a question, yes, you said yeah. I, I first my apologies. I walked in late. I was caught on a, out on a site inspection. Um, I just wanted to leave here today knowing um, the timeline so I can get a stupid completion issue for this project. I know there's still some review that needs to be done by uh, Jim and company. Um, Jim, do you have everything you need to complete that review? Can you just give me a really quick synopsis? And I'm sorry if you repeated yourself. No, not at all. Um, so uh, at this point, um, we have not received a go ahead to, to begin doing the review uh, because the, uh, you know, the check that I guess Greg is uh, coordinating sending in hasn't uh, hasn't arrived yet. Um, okay. And then as far as um, the thing that we were approved to do on uh, this project was an emergency, if you will, uh, inspection, uh, given soil erosion issues that were going on out there back in January. We haven't been, um, you know, officially, I guess, or formally asked to do uh, further review on this yet. And I don't believe we have as-built drawings or anything like that to uh, to review at this point either. So if we're being asked to review the site, uh, we currently don't have the materials that we would need to do that. And uh, we haven't put together, since we don't have those materials, we haven't put together a proposal to do that kind of a review. Okay, Greg, yeah. can, you, can you please give me an update where you are with that? Yep, uh, quick update. So check went in the mail on Friday. I'm following up to see if we have tracking or anything like that. So we're expecting that to be ready this week. And as built, I'm actually expecting those to come in any minute now today. Okay, perfect. So once you get those to us, we'll send them to Jim and company and then uh, we can get moving forward. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, does anyone from the committee have any questions, comments on um, Blue Wave, Tremont Middle? No, I actually, this sounds like progress moving forward, mm -hmm. you know. Um, yeah, I would love to hear that. <laughs> uh, are you all set, uh, Jim Rin? A, um, a quick question. Uh, <clears throat> Wave. So, will that be coming in for review just for a stormwater permit, or will no? There... This will be for the whole project. Correct. Okay. So we so would expect I... to see. So we would expect to see an application for the planning board, stormwater, and conservation as well. Is this going to be a that, conservation? That is correct. I want everything signed off so that I can issue the C uh, COC. Okay. All right. So all right. then. Then Greg, I would I would ask that all those materials be included too. Um, hopefully, I'm uh, not stepping out here uh, beyond uh, beyond what I'm supposed to be doing. But just to make sure for us to be able to conduct all those reviews, I believe we will need applications for all three of those processes and uh, the go ahead from each of those um, those municipal. Uh, programs, if you will, uh, to uh, to conduct such a review. 
All right, awesome. I'll start getting all that together as well. Thank you. Okay, anybody else have anything on uh, Blue Wave, Tremont, Middle Streets? Okay, I guess we'll set. Um, this will be on the agenda next month too. Uh, I just keep these on here, depending upon, uh, since we've got three solar projects that are in some state of activity, uh, if there's something that uh, comes up that you want us to know about, fine. If not, we'll just carry it forward till it's uh, in effect over or done or signed off. All right, perfect. That works for me. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Uh, let's see. Agenda item six, six. New business. A, meeting dates. I don't have any dates for the Board of Selectmen yet. This is for the Stormwater Committee to meet with the Board of Selectmen to give us some direction on where we're going to be going in 2020, FY25. Um, the next item is agenda item 6B, planning board meeting. <laughs> Excuse me, June the 5th. Um, Jim Ridden, I would assume you're going to be uh, at that meeting. Uh, this is the planning board meeting to review the new proposal, the major modification for Brook Street. Yep, I certainly can be. Um, I'm not sure if I have, is that, that will be a, uh, um, at the regular time of the planning board meeting, correct? Uh, Seven o'clock, June 5th, uh, it's the public hearing. Um, and the request was made that stormwater and conservation if possible, sit in on that meeting. Uh, other than hearing the presentation and us all getting the same information at the same time. Um, uh, I'm expecting Nick to submit some kind of a request of a waiver to go from an infiltration basin to whatever they're gonna call this new system. Uh, but other than that, it's just a, this is just an informational thing. Yeah, go ahead, Jim. So, uh, Jim Rannan, at today's PAC meeting, that's the permanent compliance team. I'm not sure if you're familiar with that committee. Um, it was said that the review for this uh, probably won't be done by the June 5th meeting. So if that is true, um, I don't know that we would be able to hear a waiver request. Is, can you give any insight on where we stand with the review for per per Brook Street Solar? Yeah, so um, so we're in the process of putting that memorandum together. Um, I believe we can get it to you in advance of that meeting. That shouldn't be a problem. Oh, okay, perfect. That's yeah. great news. Uh, and we, we understand that June 5th could be continued um, the reason why we asked the stormwater and concom to attend is if by any chance it gets wrapped up and uh, the waiver request is there, we could act on it. But by the same token, if that hearing is continued, then we'd be asking the, those committees to come to the next meeting. Um, what Mr. Karen, the chairman of the Board of Selectmen, told Mr. Hafez was that the town would do what it could to move things along, meaning we don't have to keep having separate meetings. So when the appropriate time comes, hopefully, um, if the stormwater committee has to act on a request, we can do it. Uh, the question about CONCOM is, I don't know how much area they're going to disturb when they dig up the big basin, and I don't know the proximity to wetlands. And the other concern was, Mr. Ferry pointed out, the ditch that the culvert goes over to access the site is an intermittent stream. And from the plans we received, it looks like the discharge could be somewhere near the discharge that's there now. Uh, but there were concerns raised by abutters about whether or not that um, new system would end up going into the ditch. And so that's just something else that we decided that we would uh, bring up. Uh, I'll be prepared to answer if it comes up. So, okay. Okay, um, a quick question for, uh, um, for Jim, if I could. Uh, yeah. How uh, how much in advance of June fifth do you folks need to have 
the memo in order to distribute it appropriately to, uh, uh, you know, to the group of folks at the June 5 meeting? Yeah, I, I mean, I would say a day or so would be more than an adequate. Um, uh, I guess depends how in depth your memorandum is, but I, I'd like at least a day to look at it, I think, so I can comment accordingly. Anyone else have any other? No, 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 we, whatever you send out, Jim, I'll make sure the stormwater committee gets it and I'll forward it to uh, uh, the CONCOM. Just so, as I said, the goal is to try to get everybody to get the information around the same time so that we don't have to schedule additional meetings. Absolutely. Yeah, no, I, I think we should be able to get it well in advance of the June 5 meeting, um, but it is helpful to know because uh, sometimes uh, um, sometimes different uh, committees and boards and so on may have different requirements in terms of how quickly they can turn it around to their group and how, uh, how much time uh, members of the group like to get for reviews. So, Thank you very much. It's helpful to to know that in advance. Okay. Anything else on Brook Street, Mr. Ferry? Yeah, it's tied in with the A and B there. So you already know I, I can make that meeting at June fifth, but the regular scheduled meeting week I'll be away. It, you sounds like you don't know when our next meeting for June will be, anyways. And um, it's probably going to be a special meeting. We just need a quorum. I don't have to be there. If you have it still that same week, but we just want to make sure we have a quorum. I have another issue. I may have a problem the first two weeks of June being available, physically available for any meetings. So um, I may have to be meeting for business. I'll be surprised if we get through this on June the 5th, quite frankly. I think I have the feeling it's so going to be. How many of us you need to have June 5th? And remember the June meeting. Our June meeting is not the third Wednesday. We moved it to the Tuesday because the Wednesday is the holiday. Right. Um, if the planning board hearing is continued, we won't be acting on it that week anyhow. Because okay. if the planning board hearing is continued, right. I see the stormwater committee attending the next continued meeting and doing something then. Mm -hmm. Because we... Again, we, we want everybody to hear the same stuff at the same time, and we won't act ahead of. So for June 5th or a special meeting or any time, including yourself, you just need two other members for a quorum? I just need four people. Okay, that's right. We have Woody online. That's how we start. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, um, and just seeing as how we're throwing facts out there. I believe June starts the summer schedule, so I don't think planning was meeting every two weeks. We no, well, this is, a, this is a special, I think. Uh, oh, it is. I don't know if, I don't <laughs> know if there's anything else on the agenda that night, or if this is this is the date that when they came in with their material, they made the deadline, this is what they got. I'm, I'm not sure. Okay. I think I but, got it here somewhere. But whatever planning is going to hear this, and if they continue it to whenever, then that's when the stormwater committee would act on a waiver request if one is received. Okay. I'll figure it out. We had someone else join just with the phone number, a 201 number. Oh, uh, Ahmed, are you online? That's not a 201. Is that New Jersey? Who is Kevin Randolph? Mr. Randolph, which project are you here for? Kevin Randolph? I am I am here for Brook Street, listening in. Oh, okay. Um, did you hear the discussion that we had, which is pretty much everything's continued to the Yes, ma'am. Okay. 201 area code is New Jersey. That's what I thought. Okay. Um, did you have any questions, Mr. Randolph? No, ma'am. Y'all were thorough. I appreciate it. Okay. Uh, anything else on um, the planning board meeting, or we'll just we'll just play it by ear. We'll attend okay. the meeting and see where it goes and when it gets continued or however it gets resolved. Um, she doesn't. We don't have to drag her there, right? Fighting and screaming. <laughs> That, that is a question, though. No, she doesn't have to attend. Yes. It won't be. It won't be, be a full. It'll be recorded anyways by someone else. It won't be a full agenda. 
So we'll get notes. All right. Um, moving on to agenda item seven, unanticipated items. Are there any? Hearing none. Public input. All our public left. <laughs> 201, have you, do you have anything to say? Area code 201? No, guess not. Mr. Randolph? Guess not. I apologize, no. Okay. Uh, we have an item called public input and it, it's a point in time where uh, anyone uh, who wishes to make a comment uh, can make it. Um, it doesn't have to be somebody here from the town of Dighton. So that's what that item is, okay? <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, correspondence, do we have anything there? Mm, I don't. I think so. I just have a couple emails, but that's all. Relative to anything we've discussed? Um, the email that you responded to Nick and Kerry for Brook Street Solar. And yeah, that's it. Oh, the information I sent to Nick Fassendola, is yes. that what you mean? Yeah. Okay, no, we don't need that. Um, he was just asking questions about the waivers that we had granted at the previous meeting. So yeah, that was just information so that he can figure out what he's going to do uh, with a waiver request. Um, approval of the minutes for April 17th. These are not ready. Sorry, I didn't get to them. So uh, these may be on the agenda at June the 5th. Um, report on expenses, did we have any um, I think we had some invoices that were processed from the 53G account. So as far as that, it was just clarification. It's an internal part. We had two 53Gs for the Brook Street project. They were combined internally. Okay. All I need to know is what was the total money expended? Because Mike Mullen asked me to be sure and mentioned that money had been expended from the account and what the total was that was spent. Um, Would you like to see this? It's yes. the general budget. Yes. I assume these were payments to Weston and Samson for the work they've done. I'm, I'm sure. This is all I receive. Yeah, I see entries for the only one that doesn't. Uh, yeah, okay, these are all, this would be work done for uh, Brook Street. So we had a balance of, I believe it's the 1842. And we just started a new, because we had changed accounts, date, this new account didn't know about the previous 53G. Mm -hmm. So, and then you got that new balance of 11,000 for the pay review that's coming. So those are combined. Right. Okay. So, um, so there is still, well, obviously there's still more work coming because the, the review of the new project or uh, the new drainage basin design, whatever, right. uh, that'll be part of this. Okay. And as far as other expenses, in my department, we, we wrap, we're wrapping up the street sweeping today. So we'll have fuel expenses and whatnot. Okay, so for the next fuel. meeting, you can let me know. Yeah. Um, will that include disposal of the stuff? That's the catch basins cleaning. And that's, oh. still, that's still waiting for testing. That's segregated, waiting for testing or not. Okay, all right. Uh, is there anything else that anyone has or whatever. So our, our meeting next month is the 18th. The regular meeting is on the Tuesday um, because June 19th is the holiday. So we set it for June 18th. Um, I'm going to be away on June 18th. Okay. Heather, when you get a chance, send out an email reminding the committee members about the 18th and ask if they're going to be here, because we may have to reschedule it. <clears throat> okay. Dave can take my place. 
Huh? Dave can take my place. Sure. No one can take your place, Thomas. <laughs> you are unique. Nobody wants to take his place. <laughs> Very true. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Okay, here we go. Uh, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. All right. Thank you, everybody. This has got to be a, a record meeting. I'm looking at, was it 142? I think it says. Awesome. Take care. Thank you, everybody.